At American Safeguard Insurance, you get an actual human being just down the street to get advice on the confusing world of insurance. There's no need to shop around every time your insurance company tries to raise rates. You can relax and let us do it for you. Having a choice is a big deal, and when insurance companies compete, you save money. One of the most important benefits is we actually monitor your premium for rate increases. If we notice a rate increase, we reshop your premium to ensure the best rate. And when the time comes to use your insurance, and we hope it doesn't, you have a friend to help guide you during one of the most stressful times of your life. All your needs under one roof, from vehicle to life insurance, and everything in between. We protect it all. Ivy's Family Disco Pharmacy has been serving the Greer's Ferry Lake area since 1976. They are located on the back side of the Court Square in downtown Heber Springs. Ivy's Family Disco Pharmacy offers private consultations, Medicare enrollment, and immunizations for pneumonia, flu, COVID, shingles, tetanus, and more. They also test and treat strep and flu. Their staff is committed to providing fast and friendly service. Stop by today to see why Ivy's Family Disco Pharmacy is Greer's Ferry Lake's number one independent pharmacy. Davis is more than just a hardware store with six locations to serve you in Heber Springs, Greer's Ferry, Sherwood, Pea Ridge, Fayetteville, and Centerton. They are your one-stop shop for hardware and home improvement. They are also the home of the Lake Boutique featuring clothing, footwear, jewelry, accessories, baby items, home decor, and kitchen items. Whether you're building a new home, improving your old one, or needing a gift for yourself or someone else, stop by one of their locations and experience all that they have to offer. Good evening and welcome back to Clinton First Service Bank Classic. Got a quick just few minutes between the last game between Southside B Branch Girls and Marshall. Marshall winning 31 to 30. Starting lineups being announced for West Side against South Side Boys. Starting lineups first for West Side: Max Gibson, Dax Hip, Zach Birmingham, Rustin Holt, and Jacob Carlton. For South Side, it's Tyler Sullivan, Whit Holland, Nathan Emmert, Connor Riddle, and Jackson Thorne. West Side coming in at six and two on the season. Why South Side is five and five. West Side lost on Saturday to Berryville by a 58 to 52 score to move to this ball game. While South Side B Branch dropped a 66-47 game to Shirley. Tip is underway. South Side B Branch with the opening tip. Turnover now in the hands of Max Gibson for West Side. They started fast, didn't they? They did. They took about eight <laughs> minutes off the clock, so mm -hmm. had to hurry to get this one on. 
Well, they they started with 16, so they did not give us fair warning on that one as Birmingham takes a three shot, doesn't go. Nice board by Rustin Holt. The Eagles keep it. Looking to feed Birmingham. It'll be a turnover. That one in the hands of Thorne. Southside B Branch with the basketball. We do have some a threat of winter weather in this area, so I'm sure they're just trying to get the games underway and finished as quickly as possible with that threat incoming. West side now with the ball. Holt in the lane. Shot doesn't go. Rebound. Birmingham put back is good. And he's just he brings so much length to the floor. Just super athletic. He can jump out of the gym. We know that just based off of last year. Three-pointer on the mark. Rebound by Gibson. It goes back to West side quickly. Two to nothing. Eagles. Birmingham on the lane or on the line. Says so he stepped on it. So it'll be a turnover and go back to South Side B Branch. Ran out of real estate. Hornets looking for their first points of the game, trailing two to nothing. 6.41 to go, opening quarter of play. Thanks for watching today on Lake Area Sports. Jumper is blocked, blocked by Holt. Birmingham comes up with it. Eagle basketball quickly on the other end. Gibson making the move one-on-one -on -one to the hoop. Shot doesn't go. Birmingham with the board. His shot doesn't go. Hip with it. He tries to stay control of, or hold control of it. He can't. It'll go out of bounds. It'll be Southside B Branch basketball. If you know your 1A basketball through the years, you know these two schools are former conference rivals in the 1A2 South. That's what our conference was called when we were when I was in high school. So big rivals, but one's at 2A, one's at 1A. Southside being at 2A. Southside lost to Westside's conference mate Shirley on Saturday. As we have the first bucket by Connor Riddle, two to two is the score. Connor in his second year at Southside B Branch went to school many years there at Heber Springs. His dad, Jamie, was the girls basketball coach there for the Lady Panthers for many years. Uh, attempt by Carlton doesn't go Southside B Branch with the board. Two to two is the score, 535 left in the first. Three pointer top of the key up and good. Tyler Sullivan with the trifecta and it's five to two south side. Nice find there, top of the key. That's again where you want to try it, trying to fire back. They do. Gibson answers with the trifecta and we are tied. Wow. Seen a little bit of that in the first game we covered a little bit earlier, back and forth. South side with the ball, 5.03 left first quarter. Game nodded at five. Three point up by Sullivan. Doesn't go. Rebound Jacob Carlton, west side with the ball. Jacob Carlton has had a hot start to this year. He's flirted with 30 points multiple times this year. Good footwork by him. Wow. Makes it up and good. First points of the ball game for Carlton, and west side now leads by two. South side with the ball. Looking to go inside. Kicking it back outside. Sullivan passes it right to Dax Hip. It'll be a turnover. West side with the ball. Finding Birmingham on the move. And he will draw the foul and go to the line for two. A lot of familiar faces out here for both of these teams from last year, last season. Just shows how young the teams we covered this season or and last season were, how young they were. That foul was called on Thorne, his first. Birmingham at the line, first is up and good. He'll have one more from the charity stripe. And that was a good, that was a good drive inside for Birmingham to, to draw the foul and try to get the basket. He didn't, but he goes two for two from the line there. Birmingham with four, west side up by that margin. Turned over. Other side turnover, Birmingham with it. One-on-one -on -one move to the hoop. Shot doesn't go fight for the board. And it'll be a foul on the west side, likely on Rustin Holt. Indeed. On the over the back there. So the ball will go to south side B branch. Quick first quarter. Nearly midway through it. 4.05 left. Started about 10 minutes ahead of the uh, projected start time. Three-pointer up by Sullivan. Does not go. Rebound by Gibson. Gibson, they're trying to trap him there. Over to Dax Hip. He's able to hold on. Carlton, top of the key. 
Batted away from him into the hands of Sullivan. Southside B Branch with the ball. Trying to feed Riddle. Pass and player off the mark there, and it'll go back to West Side. Gibson with the basketball, 3.36 to go first quarter of play. Eagles up by four. Yep, over to Holt, 4-3. That one is off the mark, fight for the board. Ends up with the hands of Sullivan for south side. B Branch quickly on the other side. It's taken away by Gibson. Eagles back with the basketball. Gibson makes a move, kicks it out. Birmingham, three-pointer up, off the mark. They're going to say last touch by the Eagles, so the ball will belong to the Hornets. A lot of back and forth there. Still early in this one. Both teams trying to figure out one another. Some turnovers there. Some open threes missed. Just, uh, they're getting after it early here in this one. 9-5 to five West Side, 3.07 left in this opening quarter of play. Thanks for watching Lake Area Sports. Jumper does not go. Fight for the board. Into the hands of Birmingham. It'll be West Side basketball. Gibson makes a move. Kicks it over to Birmingham. Over to Hip. Inside to Holt. One on one matchup in the lane is good. Rustin Holt with his first point to the ball game. And you see West Side just trying to continue to attack inside. Get the easiest basket you can. And they have the weapons necessary to do that. And they do move quickly. That's eight of them so far in this one. Nice feed inside, up and good. Nathan Emmert, his first bucket of the ball game. It is 11 to 7. Got a whistle on the other end. It'll stay with the Eagles. Second foul on Thorne. And he's been their leading scorer in a few of their games so far this season, Thorne has for the Hornets. So he picks up his second foul in this first quarter. Got a foul on the most, I don't know what you call it, famous. The, the, the most notable West Side inbound play is the toss to Birmingham. He doesn't right. hit the shot, but he'll go over the line for two. And that's another foul on Southside B Branch. They're up to three. Just a lot of length on the floor for both teams. Birmingham at the line. He's one of those guys that just gives them that much more length. Uh, Carlton as well. Rustin Holt. Got some, some people out there with some experience for Westside. Indeed. Jumper off the lane, off the mark by Holland. Westside with the board. And they're going to say the Birmingham took too many steps, and it'll go back to the Hornets. 2.05 left in the first. That's the West Side program. They made it to the championship game of this tournament last season. Came up a bit short to Greenbrier, I believe. Yes. That sounds correct anyway, so I'll, I'll believe <laughs> you there. <laughs> Thanks. Southside with the ball. Going to have a drive by Riddle, and a foul on the Eagles. I think they're going to call it on the hip. It is his first team foul, number two, on the Eagles. Sullivan all alone off the inbounds play. Count it from behind the arc. Lead shrinks down to three. One possession game. 13 to 10, 146 left in the first. Carlton in the lane, makes a move, shot doesn't go, Holt with the board, back out to Birmingham, he goes back to the hoop, and they're going to say offensive foul, and so it'll go the other way. I'll tell you, Jacob Carlton has really worked on his footwork. I mean, the, the years I've seen him play, he's kind of been more of a spot-up three-point shooter, but it looks like he's lost a little weight out there, put on some muscle, and and he's got his footwork down pretty good here early on in this one. He's very comfortable banging with the bigs on the inside. As we have a whistle and the ball will go the other way, it'll go to west side, 124 left in the first. Gibson over the timeline. Looking to go inside to Carlton, kicked ball. So we'll do it over again.
Quick discussion. I think on the shot clock, kicked it back out to 35. Inside feed to Birmingham, and he is fouled going to the hoop on the inbounds play. Foul on Sullivan. His first, and Birmingham will be at the line for the third time of this ball game. And he has not yet missed. Birmingham is six for six from the charity stripe, and he's got eight points. West side with a 15 to 10 lead. The majority of their 15 points. South side with the ball. Sullivan in the corner. Dribbles out. Black with it. He's quickly surrounded. Sullivan for three. Rattles in and out. Rebound by Gibson. Quickly on the other side. Gibson in the lane. Makes the move. Shot doesn't go. Board goes to Holland. On the other side, all alone almost, is Riddle. He makes it count. Riddle with a fast break bucket. He has four points. And that's his bread and butter. He, he, can, he can knock down the three ball, but he wants to get in as close as he can with that length that he, he possesses. Just under half a minute to go in this opening quarter. Got the big bucket on the inside by Carlton. He'll go to the line with a chance for one more. That is so difficult to stop when you got a guy that, like I mentioned moments ago, just his, he's got good footwork. He knows how to get or try to draw the foul, and he does there and finishes through the contact and gets the old-fashioned three-point play right there. Twenty seconds to go, opening quarter. South side, B Branch with the basketball. Stolen away by Gibson. Ten seconds to go in the first quarter. Here's Holt. Holt making a move to the hoop. Shot doesn't go. Back in the hands of Southside B Branch. A long one. Way off the mark. And we have one quarter in the books. It's West Side 18, Southside B Branch 12. We'll be back for the second quarter in just a few seconds. Thanks for watching Lake Area Sports. Ivy Physical Therapy in Hamber Springs is a proud supporter of the Lake Area athletes. If you or your student athlete are looking to get back in shape or for therapy after an injury, give Ivy Physical Therapy a call at 501-362-8118 or visit ivyphysicaltherapy.com. Back to Clinton where West Side leads South Side B Branch 18 to 12 after one quarter of play. Our second game of the day in the first one if you missed it. Marshall girls hold on for a 31 to 30 win over South Side B Branch. It's our only semifinal game today is it had to get moved up to today rather than tomorrow. Tomorrow was supposed to be all semifinal games but here we are with the consolation, these last two. Got one more game to go. Mm -hmm. West side and Clinton on the girls' side tonight. We'll have that one right after this one on Lake Area Sports. Three-pointer up, does not go. Rebound by Birmingham. They almost take it away, but he holds on. Pass up to Carlton. Over to Holt. Holt kicks it out to Hip. Hip makes a move. Almost falls down into Birmingham. Shot in the lane. Up and good. It's a nice little spot there for him to, to drain that basket. Birmingham now with 10 points for the Eagles. 20 to 12. West side on top. 7-11 to go. Opening, or opening half. Jumper rattles in. Finally. Got the guy roll. Riddle. It did. About to call it out, and it bounced back in. Six unofficially for Riddle. Hip with it. 
up to Holt, top of the key. Holt makes a move, drives in the lane, shot is up and good. This West Side team has done a nice job of attacking the basket so far, Richard. Indeed. Uh, as they strike right back, Sullivan there, but Holt, he just was a man on a mission. Nothing was going to stop him from working his way in. Back on the other end, Carlton with a miss, rebound by Sullivan. Taken away by Holt, makes a move to the basket, is good! Holt with the bucket, and he'll go to the line with a chance for one more. That's four quick ones for him, can make it five right here. There was not much scoring in that first game. This game has well than, more than well made up for it, Richard. Indeed. Holt off the mark, rebound by Birmingham. Second shot doesn't go, put back, it's good, and he's back to the charity stripe. It looked like he was going to get somewhat of an easy two. Instead, he could go for three here on that putback. Just able to wrestle that rebound away from a Southside B Branch player and lift it up and put it in. That's foul number seven on the Hornets and the fourth of the ball game on Jackson Thorne. Wow this early in the game, only only 10 minutes, little under 10 minutes played in this one. Rebound by Slade Engel, his shot is blocked into the hands of Riddle. Hornets go the other way. 26-16, west side on top. 6-11 to go in the opening half of play. Riddle trying to get away from the trap there, and he does. West side defense. And good on guard play, but sliding inside, Nathan Emmert with that bucket. He's got four unofficially. Good move, my, good move by Emmert there, able to create some space, and he takes advantage there and scores from the left side. He goes back with it, pass from Engel, too far out of the outstretched hand of Carlton, and so it'll go back to the Hornets with 541 left until halftime. Eagles leading 26 to 18. Hornets with the basketball. West, West side is trying the trap last time out on defense and a long three pointer by Riddle is off the mark. Fight for the board and we've got a whistle. It'll be a foul on the Eagles. Team foul number four. And the first on Max Gibson. Hornets trying to take it in to Holland. Over to Black, kick it around to Emmert. They're wanting to go inside, can't do it. Pass is almost picked off. Black makes a move, kicks it back outside to Holland. Top of the key, looking to go inside to Riddle. Riddle gets it, makes a move, shot doesn't go, but he draws the foul. Yeah, he, had, he was trying to establish that inside position there with his back to the basket saying, feed me, but they just weren't able to get it in, and they do get it into him there, and or he's able to, to get the ball in his hands and draw the foul. That foul is on Slade Engel, his first. <laughs> Team foul number five on West Side, and Riddle now with seven points. Make it eight. Puts them both in. Eagles up 26 to 20. 4.55 left until halftime. Birmingham jumper in the lane, no good. Rebound by Black. He's trying to push the issue. Hornets have it. Riddle pulls it back. Over to Holland, three-pointer, up and good. And what was once a 10-point lead for the Eagles has dwindled down to three. 4.31 to go. Opening half of play, Eagles up by three. Carlton, they're going to say he took too many steps as he was trying to back in to the basket. And the momentum really is with Southside B Branch these last couple of minutes. And the three, another three here on this trip would tie it up. 26 all. We'll see what they do here. It was 26 to 16. Southside B Branch now just down by three. Hornets with the basketball. Ball was knocked away. They're going to say last touch by the Hornets, and so we'll go to Westside with 4.13 left in the half. 
Couple substitutions for Southside. Tyler Sullivan and Baylor Hall. We're just looking to show a little press here. Call that one a light press. They pulled back pretty quick. Gibson with it. Over to Carlton. Three-pointer up. That one is off the mark. Fight for the board. Ends up in the hands of Sullivan. He had to weave his way through traffic there. We on the other side. Back to Sullivan. Makes a move inside. And we'll have a whistle and a foul. Second foul on Gibson. Team foul number six. The Hornets are one away from the bonus as the Eagles already in the bonus. Cody Kirkendall hits his first. Or actually, switch what I said. The Hornets are, no, no, I had it right. 26-25, one-point game. That's why we do sports, not math. <laughs> right. 9-0 run for south side B branch. West side with the basketball leading by one. Carlton with it makes a move in the lane. Whistle and a foul. It'll be on the Hornets. So Carlton will go to the line on the one and one. He's got five points unofficially. Shot off the iron rebound by Birmingham. Able to get it out to Holt. It's taken away from him quickly on the other side. The pass is going to be too long for everyone. That one in the hands of Tyler Sullivan. He tried to chase it down. And Sullivan was on the other end for a while. And just a little bit too much on the, on the touchdown try there. <laughs> it's a long. There's a three-quarter court pass. Yeah, a long pass there. Goes back to West Side. Eagles up by one. 314 left until halftime. Carlton in the lane, makes a move. Trying to go up there. Jumper rolls in. Finishes through. Carlton now with seven unofficially. Back on the other side. South side with it quickly. Jumper is blocked by Carlton. Saved by South Side B branch. Another shot doesn't go. Put back is blocked by Holt, and he ends up with it. But I think they're going to say that he couldn't hold it in bounds. Right. And that is the call. It's outside to take it in. Sullivan with it. 2.45 to go until halftime. Sullivan in the lane. Jumper does not go. Fight for it. Ends up in the hands of Gibson. West side basketball, 2.34 in the half. Pull up three. Gibson rattles it in. Nothing but net for Max Gibson. He's got six unofficially, and West Side now leads 31 to 25. That's the way the game has changed through the years. It's, I mean, you know, just guys going for that pull up three out of transition. You see that so often today. Here's with three now. Riddle, that one is off the mark. Rebound by Carlton. He thought he was fouled, but didn't get the call. Quickly on the other end, nice defense, but Birmingham ends up with it anyway. Hip for three. That one doesn't go rebound by a Holt. That one is blocked. It's going to be last touch by Southside B Branch, and they'll stay with the Eagles, 155 to go in the second quarter. Inside to Carlton. He makes a move. Shot doesn't go. But they will whistle the Hornets for a foul, and Carlton will head to the charity stripe. First foul on Hall as Carlton steps to the charity stripe. Rattles home the first one. Eight points unofficially for him. Second one does not go. Rebound by Hall. Southside B Ranch quickly on the other end. Nice move. Shot doesn't go from Sullivan. Eagles with the board. 140 to go in the half. West side with the ball. Another pull up three. 
got Gibson, it. Gibson, his third trifecta of this ball game, and he's got nine points. Westside's lead now back up to ten. Look on the other end, Sullivan. I mean, that was Riddle. And he will go to the charity stripe for the one and one. Second foul of the ball game on hip. Team foul number seven. Riddle sinks that one. He's got nine. Second shot off the mark. Rebound by Birmingham. 124 to go in the half. Coach Brown rings up the play call. Gibson in the lane, makes a move, shot doesn't go, but he will go to the charity stripe. Trying to finish through the contact, kind of made an acrobatic move there, still able to draw the foul. He's had a great second quarter, a couple of pull-up threes, showing his range out here in this one. He's off the mark there from on the first one. Gibson nine points unofficially. He's at three from beyond the arc. He's got ten now with that free throw. 36-26, west side up by ten. Just over a minute left in the opening half of play. Thanks for watching on Lake Area Sports. South side with the ball. Jumper does not go. Rebound by Sullivan. Hornets will keep it under a minute. Oh. Lead to Riddle in the lane. Ball doesn't roll in. Fight for the board. Riddle has it. Put back attempt. Doesn't go, but the second try does. And Emmert was trying to find him there with the pass to Riddle, and he just did. Gibson rolls out. Rebound by Riddle. Under half a minute to go in the half. Left side up, 36-28. Sullivan in the corner, all alone, shot doesn't go. Emmert Rebound by Emmert, the jumper, that one does not go. Rebound by Kirkendall, it's up and good. Cody Kirkendall with four points. S sophomore coming through with a putback there. Three seconds long, three by Carlton, doesn't go. And that'll do it for the first half of play. It's West Side 36 and South Side B Branch 30. First half thoughts, Richard. All right, back and forth. They they continue to go. West Side went, kind of kept it there at a at a 10 point margin or so. Uh, you know, they just for a while they're answering each other. Seemed like they were trying to work it inside. But hey, both team knocked down both teams knocked down some big shots from outside as well. Uh, you know, just, just trying to get some points up on the board, maybe still trying to find out one another. And I mean, because I don't even think these two schools as close as they are play during the regular season at any point, even though they were former conference rivals. But uh, Southside's up in 2A now with the likes of Quitman. So, uh, you know, good all in all, good first half. Just back and forth they go. There was some unofficial scoring for you for the Eagles. Zach Birmingham leading the, the way with 12 points. Max Gibson with 10. Eight for Jacob Carlton and six for Rustin Holt. For South Side unofficially, Connor Riddle with 11 points. Tyler Sullivan with eight. Four points for Cody Kirkendall and Nathan Emmert and three for Whit Holland. So at 36, I've got the score wrong on the scoreboard. 36-30. 36 to 30. <laughs> Put a two points on the last one, and we will head to halftime. Thank some sponsors, pay some bills, and be back in just over six minutes. Thanks for watching Lake Area Sports. I can make your hands clap. Said I can make your hands clap. Every night when the stars come out.
At Nap Trust, they specialize in insulation and creation of custom wood trusses for your home or business. Nap Trust utilizes only premier lumber to ensure our products will last. When you come to Nap Trust, you will have the peace of mind knowing you're receiving the best quality construction for the best price in the area. Nap Trust staff members have years in the industry and know what it takes to install a quality trust from the start to finish. Call Nap Trust at 870-948-2105 today. Nobody has sold more Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep brand vehicles than the Landers family. If you're looking for a hassle-free, stress-free buying experience, then Cowboy Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, and Clint is your place to shop. We've got all the trucks you're looking for with brand new V8 Ram trucks starting at just $29,988. If there's a job to be done, we've got the truck for it. Ram 2500, 3500, gas or diesel, crew cab, mega cab, or cabin chassis, we've got all the trucks. Nobody will beat a cowboy deal on your next Jeep with up to $5,000 off or an available 0% interest. Shop us today. Jeep Gladiator, Wrangler, Grand Cherokee, Wagoneer, it's all in stock and ready to deliver. If you want to pay too much, buy somewhere else. If you want the car deal you've always waited for, Cowboy Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Clinton is your place to shop. It's quick and easy. Jump online at CowboyCDJR.com or give us a call at 501-745-5333. Cowboy up or you'll pay too much. Rick's Pawn and Swap Shop is your hometown spot to buy, sell, or trade gold, silver, guns, tools, jewelry, water sports, and a whole lot of fishing gear located at 7560 Edgemont Road in Higdon. Rick's Pawn and Swap Shop is also your local authorized U-Haul dealer. Stop by and check out their new inventory at affordable prices. If you're looking for something special, check them out on Facebook or see Nathaniel for any firearms questions. Or call them at 501-270-5969. You know, growing up and watching my dad do business, he always instilled in me to make sure you support your local communities and your state. That's why at Red River, we've made it our mission to be involved, like the Arkansas Food Bank or the Heber Springs Firework on the 4th of July or just the local school district. We do everything we can to plug in and give back in our communities. That's why we want you, the next time you're looking for a new Ram Dodge Chrysler and Jeep, to make that beautiful drive to Heber Springs during this Black Friday sales event. At American Safeguard Insurance, you get an actual human being just down the street to get advice on the confusing world of insurance. There's no need to shop around every time your insurance company tries to raise rates. You can relax and let us do it for you. Having a choice is a big deal, and when insurance companies compete, you save money. One of the most important benefits is we actually monitor your premium for rate increases. If we notice a rate increase, we reshop your premium to ensure the best rate. And when the time comes to use your insurance, and we hope it doesn't. You have a friend to help guide you during one of the most stressful times of your life. All your needs under one roof, from vehicle to life insurance, and everything in between. We protect it all.
Ivy's Family Disco Pharmacy has been serving the Greer's Ferry Lake area since 1976. They are located on the back side of the Court Square in downtown Heber Springs. Ivy's Family Disco Pharmacy offers private consultations, Medicare enrollment, and immunizations for pneumonia, flu, COVID, shingles, tetanus, and more. They also test and treat strep and flu. Their staff is committed to providing fast and friendly service. Stop by today to see why Ivy's Family Disco Pharmacy is Greer's Ferry Lake's number one independent pharmacy. Back to Clinton for the second half of action. West side with the basketball up by six. Look at this lob up to Birmingham, and he finishes with the reverse. Oh, wow, what a nice feed on the inside from Gibson to Birmingham. Birmingham now with 14 points. Great play call there from Coach Brown to start the second half. Eagles up by eight. Hornets with the ball. Top of the key, Sullivan all alone. Three-pointer off the mark, rebound by Birmingham. He's pressured immediately. Hip with it across the timeline. Over to Carlton. Carlton makes a move, pulls back, jumper, wow. rolls in. <laughs> he was coming back down right on the step back, and he didn't have much time to get it off or get the shot off, and he did, and it bounced, it rolls in for him. Wow. Quick four points for the Eagles. Ten-point advantage for West Side. Sullivan in the lane. It's gonna be Riddle in the lane is up and good. Riddle with 13 points so far. West side leads by eight. Gibson makes a move into the lane. Shot does not go. Rebound by Riddle. Hornets go the other way. Hornets with the basketball. Sullivan makes a move. Quickly surrounded by two. Three-pointer from the corner. Off the mark. Fight for the rebound. They're going to say... Last touch by Southside B Branch. Nathan Emmert was battling Zach Birmingham for it, and Emmert touched it last, so it'll go to the Eagles. 6:24 left in the third quarter. I'll send a shout out to Jeff Mannon, Shirley basketball coach, yeah. former Lake Area sports broadcaster. Watching a little basketball today. Hi, Jeff. from not too far down the road here. Right. West side with it. Birmingham makes a move off the feed. It's up and good. Do they count it? No. It's going to be a whistle and go the other way. Blue Devils are victorious over these Hornets Saturday afternoon and moved into the semifinal round with a win. Day two of the first service bank classic in Clinton. Drive to the hoop shot. Doesn't go rebound by Carlton. Eagles have it. Gibson looking to run. He pulls back a little over to Carlton. Spot up three. He couldn't take it, but he took too many steps. Off the move there, and it'll go back to the Hornets. 5.48 left in the third quarter. Got one more game for you tonight. There has been a schedule change, so the next game between Westside and Clinton girls is the last game on the schedule tonight. We'll have that one for you on Lake Area Sports. Gibson. With the ball after the miss. Not able to skirt the sideline there. The Hornets take it away. Nice move by Emmert. Shot doesn't go. Rebound by Carlton. He's going to dribble out. Carlton he kicks is. it over to Birmingham. Birmingham, the long wow. shot is up and good. Just Zach Birmingham, 17 points tonight. He is just raining it from everywhere. Well, that's what makes these Eagles so dangerous. They got so many guys that can score from the inside or the outside because there's an answer. Cole, Cole Pennington, Pennington. Yeah. his first bucket of the ball game. He answers. 43-35, west side, eight-point advantage. Gibson for the long three off the front of the iron. Rebound by Hall. Quickly on the other side. Riddle making a move. Shot is up and in. Six-point game. Riddle now with 15 points. He's having a whale of a ball game. Gibson with it looking over the sideline. 
Going inside to Carlton. Now I got a whistle and a foul before the move. That foul is on Pennington, his first, team's first to the half. That's the first by either team this half. Not a lot of whistles so far in this third quarter. Inbounds to Birmingham, and he'll draw the foul. Zach Birmingham heading to the charity stripe. He has been no stranger from there today. The Hornets have nine seniors this year, but they have a hoist of juniors and sophomores. I believe about nine or ten sophomores, I counted, are in that ballpark. Wow. So They have a lengthy roster. Indeed. I had to shrink the font to get them in. <laughs> right. Yeah. I got to keep it big because I'm old. <laughs> Nah, not, th not really. <laughs> Birmingham sinks two. He's got 19 points. Eagles up 45-37. Nice feed on the inside. Bucket is up and good by Pennington. Pennington now with five. He hit him perfection. Poetry motion on the backdoor cut. Holt kicks it out to Birmingham. Birmingham into the lane. He's got to draw the foul before he gets there. This Hornet team has fouled Zach Birmingham, I don't know, at least in the ballpark of six or seven times tonight. He made several trips to the charity stripe. Having trouble slowing him down. Gibson for three, count it. Uh, nice screen in that left corner by Gibson. By uh, Carlton. The screen from Carlton freed Gibson up, Gibson up to put that three up and score it. And that is the fourth trifecta of the night for Gibson. He's got 13 points. Foul on Rustin Holt. Team's first of this half, his second. South side with the basketball. Top of the key, three-pointer. That one is off the mark. Stays with the Hornets. Holland kicks it inside. Shot. They're going to say tie up on the shot from Kirkendall. It'll Jacob stay. Carlton with a nice defensive work there, but it'll stay with Southside. Mm -hmm. Trying to catch it on a cutter again, and this time the two thumbs up will go the other way. Alternating possession goes to West Side. Yeah, hip tied up with. He tied up there with Riddle before. Riddle was able to get a shot up and give the ball back to Westside. Carlton in the lane, jumper up and good. Man, just making it look effortless down low. Carlton now with a dozen points. That's that's where that's that's his bread and butter. I mean, that's why he's been able to score up in the range of 30 points. Wow. The corner is up and good. Whit Holland with a trifecta. He's got six. It's now a 50 to 42 game. West side on top, 254 to go, third quarter of play. John Verser, Richard Sharp, David Langford Jr. here with you from Clinton, the first service bank classic. All three games tonight on the schedule. Birmingham makes a move, and he has not missed often tonight. When you, Birmingham with 21. When you have the personnel like that, the, the length and the size that West Side has, you want to take advantage of that, and they've been able to do that. Tonight. Nice drive in the lane, and they're going to call the block, and that'll send Holland to the line for two. The call on Birmingham, his second team foul on West Side is number two. Holland at the line with six points. First shot is no good. Again, after this one. We'll have Clinton versus Westside in a girls game. That'll be the last game here tonight. The final game has been moved till tomorrow. Birmingham with the board off the miss. Eagles have it. Nice defensive play there by Emmert. He knocks it to a teammate quickly on the other side. Riddle! And he'll have a chance for another. Wow, what a great take. I mean, just guys like him. You got to be ready at all times because they're gonna they're coming through with a he full head of steam and and they're trying to score too as we got an ejection. Got a fan has been 
asked to leave. So we've got a brief pause for that. West side, 52-44. Riddle with the bucket. He'll be at the line. A chance for one more. Shaw doesn't go. Rebound by Dax. Yep. Eagles have it up by eight. Yep. Over to Carlton. He'll make a move. Jumper up in the lane. And he'll go to the charity stripe for a chance. 4-2. These two schools play in two of the toughest conferences in their classification. Southside B Branch in the 2A2 with the likes of Cedar Ridge, Izzard County, Marshall, Mount Vernon, Nola, Sloan Hendricks, Quitman, White County Central, West Side, of course, in that 1A2 with Calico Rock, Norfolk, Concord, Rural Special, Shirley, uh, Timbo, and Viola. I mean, at the Class 1A level, one of the toughest. Uh, conferences leagues at 1A as well as uh, one of the toughest leagues in 2A. They both play in stacked conferences. Pennington with the board off the miss from the charity stripe. Hornets with the basketball. Now to Emmert. He drives, shot up in the lane, doesn't go fight for the board. Rustin Holt with the board. Trying to kick it up to Carlton. Dangerous pass, but he completes it nonetheless. West side on the move. Birmingham in the lane, shot doesn't go. Birmingham gets his own board, put back attempt is blocked, gets the ball again, batted away, he gets it again over to Carlton. Carlton in the lane, he loses control of it, gets it back, puts it in. Jump ball. And a jump basketball, wow. That's a quick wow. tie up there, and so <laughs> the possession arrow says it will go to Southside B Branch. A lot of effort there. Right, a lot yeah. going on there around the basket. Didn't end up with anything. Hornets have it. Trailing by nine. Riddle trying to find a teammate inside. He does. Can't control it as Hall into the hands of Gibson. West side with the basketball. A minute left in the third quarter. Carlton makes a move. Ooh. Swings around a defender. It's up and good. That is not an easy move to make when you're on that left side and you try to finish with the right hand on the right side. Good move. Southside B branch with it. It's going to bounce around on an attempt bounce pass and head on out of bounds. Eagles quickly with it. Didn't waste any time. Gibson on the move. Shot is blocked by Emmert. Southside B branch with the ball. Over the hands of Riddle. Tries to slam it. Birmingham's in the way. And they will call a foul. Foul will be on Zach Birmingham. Those are two guys right there going up against one another that could log some sky miles for sure. So Birmingham's third foul, team's fourth on west side is Riddle. Sinks that one. He now has 18 points. Second shot up and good. West side's lead is now just nine. Riddle with 19. I don't think I'll ever forget it, but I remember watching it. Zach Birmingham broke the backboard. They <laughs> shattered the backboard, and they had to move to the old gym. It's crazy. Yeah, that was against Shirley last year. Yeah. That was crazy that being there for it. Foul in the lane on the Carlton attempt, and he'll go make that familiar walk to the charity stripe. And he'll take a couple of shots there after that foul by Hall. His second team foul, number five on Southside B Branch. And that brought up the idea of, hey, let's let's have at least one, two, maybe three games in here a year. You know, they've done a good job taking care of Elmer Gathright Gymnasium there, the, their original gym. They've done a good job. They've made some improvements there. A lot of history in that gymnasium, and it was awesome to see them play there that night. Ten seconds to go, third quarter. Southside, B Branch with the basketball. Sullivan for Ooh. three and count it. It was. It looked great from the second it left his hands. Long shot from half Ooh. court by Gibson. Does not go. We've got three quarters in the books. West side, 56. Southside, B Branch, 49. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Thanks for watching Lake Area Sports. <laughs>
Back to Clinton for the fourth quarter of play in the first service bank classic. It's west side 56, south side B branch 49. These goals have led as much lately by 11. Every time they have pushed out so far, south side B branch has pulled it back in. Eagles with the basketball feeding it inside to Birmingham is good. And he'll go to the line with one more on the line. And they have racked it up here in the second half on hoop, hoop in the harms. I mean, uh, they've been able to get to the line, have a chance at three-point plays. I mean, just continuing to finish through contact, that's what's helped them keep this double-digit lead or keep it close to this double-digit lead. West side back up by 10. Jumper is blocked. Or they're going to say foul. And that will send Tyler Sullivan to the line. 4-2. Third foul of the ball game on Rustin Holt. Team foul number five on the Eagles. It's good. Sullivan now has a dozen points. Second shot, also good. Eight-point eagle advantage. 7.41 to go in regulation. West side with the basketball. Gibson into Carlton. Carlton makes a move, shot in the lane, up and good. He has rarely missed tonight. And the Eagles' lead is back to 10. Well, again, it starts with that footwork. You don't want to travel. You want to make sure and get your steps down and get closer to the basket. And he's done a great job of that. Jumper on the other side does not go. Rebound by Riddle. But he steps on the line, so it'll be a turnover and go back to west side with 7-12 left in regulation. Hornets trying to press. Birmingham to Holt. Up to Carlton, one-on-one. -on -one. Jumper in the lane, does not go. Rebound by the Hornets. Emmert pulls that one in. Quickly on the other side. Emmert, pass was picked off by Birmingham. Knocked away from him. Carlton ends up with it. Eagles still have it. Gibson down into the corner to Holt. Holt makes a move, and he'll draw the foul. And, John, neither team really using much of the shot clock. I mean, you have a, they have a 35-second shot clock this year, but we're talking eight, nine, ten-second possessions before shots put up. They've just continued to go at one another here in this one. Has not taken long to get shots off in this one as Holt hits his first free throw. Second one rattles around. Hornets have it, trailing by 11, 6.37 to go in regulation. Lost the handle, but he got it back, Riddle. He get inside, was... Picked off, nice defensive play by Gibson and Holt. Holt has it on the other end. He dribbles around, kicks it over to Gibson. Gibson feeding Carlton. And we're going to have a foul on the play on south side B branch. And Carlton will make that familiar four-foot walk to the charity strike. And it's familiar territory for him for sure in this one. Got 18 points tonight. Carlton now with 19, one more from the line. Don't forget we'll have Westside and Clinton, a girls game after this one on Lake Area Sports, so don't go anywhere. Carlton with 20 points in Westside, its biggest lead tonight at 13. That should be a good girls game. The Lady Yellow Jackets coming off of a, there's a good feed and a foul on Holt. The Lady Yellow Jackets, had their season come to a close in the state semifinal round. And they had a good year, so they're looking to capitalize off that and build. As team foul number six on west side, the fourth of the ball game on Holt as Thorne steps to the line. First shot is good. He'll have one more. 
be real interesting to see these uh, two schools go at in baseball. They've both seen much success the last three or four years in the sport. Uh, Southside had a runner-up finish in 2A a couple of years ago, and Westside's made back-to-back -back trips to the Final Four. So, I mean, just all in all, a lot of kids out here that stay fresh, they got to stay healthy all year long. They're, they go from one sport to the next. You're a small school. You depend on a lot of the same kids right. in a lot of different sports. West side of the ball. Carlton makes the move inside. Up and good. Carlton finishes once again. And that's that's one kid right there that, that carries the carries the weight for West Side in, on the pitching staff. Mr. Making Carlton. a move. Side does not go. We got a foul and that'll send Whit Holland to the line for two. Seventh team foul on West Side. Second of the ball game on Ingle. Off the front of the iron, and Holland will have one more. Second shot is good. 12 point lead for West Side. 5.33 to go in regulation. Gibson with the ball, makes a move, trying to feed Birmingham. Ball's going to roll out of bounds. Last touch by the Eagles, so it will go back to the Hornets. Yeah, both these squads playing pretty fluid through the shot clock. Yeah, I mean, not wasted much time. We've had nowhere near close to any kind of violation shot clock-wise in either, really either game. Feed inside to Thorne. He's battling up against Carlton. Shot does not go. Rebound by Birmingham. 5.07 to go in the fourth. Eagles up by a dozen. Get over the corner. Hip. Trying to feed it inside. Finds Engel back outside to Carlton. Carlton jumper rattles wow. in off the backboard. And that he is has not missed many tonight. No. His shooting percentage is, is pretty high tonight. That is such a tough shot to make. You've got to bank it off the window with just the right amount of, of volume on your shot to put that in. Three-pointer on the other end. Does not go. Rebound by Dax Hip. Eagles have it with 432 to go in regulation. Talking about that offensive game for the Eagles. 24 points each unofficially for Birmingham. Now with 26. He had to go back ahead of Jacob Carlton. So Birmingham with 26, Carlton with 24 unofficially. 50 of the 54. Eagles wow. lead by 16, their biggest of the ball game. Long three-pointer from Sullivan. That one is off the mark. Rebound by Carlton. Halfway through the fourth quarter. Eagles up by 16. Carlton in the lane. Count it. Wow. And he'll go to the line with a chance for one more. Well, that's, that's what's helped Westside extend this lead. They led for 10 for most of the game, much of the game. And now here they are leading by 18. They're continuing to work it inside. Let's get more points up on the board as B Branch settled for a three on their last possession. They don't want to work it inside, or they didn't on that trip. They, they'll take the open three. So, I mean, for Westside, it's just continuing to let's build this lead. We've got the guys that can finish down low to do it, and hey, let's draw some fouls in the process, try to get back to the line, add some more points up on the board. 26 points for Jacob Carlton, make it 27. He now has the team lead, Birmingham, with 26. So, And he averages about that much a game. I mean, he is just points-wise just racked it up this year so far, stuff in the stat sheet. Every south side, B Branch, you trying to get into this game, 341 to go in the fourth. You got to get points in a hurry, and they are not doing that right now. Moving the lane, Riddle shot up and good. It's a sign of life for the Hornets. That's a good. I mean, it's a good move. Broke down the defense and got a little floater in the lane. I mean, that can get it going for you, but still a lot of work to do in this one. Inside to Carlton, right up back. and good. Right back in the blink of an eye. Did not hesitate. Carlton now with 29, if I can add correctly. And I, that's what I've got. Jumper from the free throw line, rolls around, doesn't go in for Riddle. Gibson with the board, and the Eagles are making this awful hard on the Hornets right now. Ball was taken away there 
by Sullivan. Hornets back with it, needing to get some points, makes a move to the hoop. And they're gonna say block. So it will be a blocking foul on the Eagles. It'll be on Zach Birmingham, his fourth team foul, number eight on West Side. Coach Moss is gonna clear the, the bench over there, put some substitutions in. A new five, it looks like. Coach Brown gonna put in a new three. Well, there's 2.47 to go, and as big as that deficit is, time to wave the white flag, and they do. You don't ever give up, but right. at some point, you, got, you want to get some guys, some experience, and some time on the court that don't normally see it. And 18 points in 2.47, you know that is a slim, slim margin to walk. Yeah, I mean, it's still early in the season. I mean, both of these teams are, in my opinion, going to be better by the end of the year because of just how tough their conferences are. They're going to see night in and night out good teams, I mean, in my opinion anyways. Ingle shot does not go also into the game for West Side. Grayson Enzer, Ty Hewitt. See Emmett Olive out there for the Eagles and a slice of the hoop shot doesn't go rebound by Olive. 2.20 to go west side basketball, 75-58 Eagles on top of the Hornets. This may be the first time in at least today's game that anyone's walked the ball up the court. Shot by, that was Enzer didn't go, it was blocked by the Hornets. Hornets with the basketball, three-pointer is up, rattles out, fight for the board. We'll see who touched it last, I think it will be the Hornets, so the ball will go to the Eagles with 1.53 to go. See a lot of new names and faces out there for both of these teams. We've got Kyler Schrag for Southside B Branch. Ryan Matchett. Trying to see these names as we go along. Uh, Lane Falk. Brian Thomas. A lot of new faces out there. Ingle misses on the shot. Rebound by the Hornets, 124 to go. 75-58, Eagles on top. Hornets with the ball, kicking it back outside. Three-pointer is on the way. Shot doesn't go there by Brian Thomas. Got another substitution for the Eagles. Coming in is Tristan Hewitt. So all five of the West Side regulars now on the bench. 107 to go. Eagles leading big. And don't forget, we've got a girls game next between West Side and Clinton. You'll have to close out of this tab and move over to the next tab. So don't think that we've gone away for the night. We just had to switch the operations up a little bit with a different game. Right. Yeah, we open with a girls game. We'll close with one. That's very rare. Have a block there by Enzer. Hornets keep it. Enzer steals it away. Ends up in the hands of Emmett Olive. 36 seconds to go. West side with the big lead. Hewitt can't hold on to it. Ball goes back to the Hornets. Half a minute left on the clock. Three-pointer is up. Off the mark. Rebound by Enzer. West side in control. 17 seconds to go. Over to Hewitt. And he is fouled. So it was in Tristan Hewitt to the line. Got a chance to get some points here. First shot does not go. We'll have one more. Again, if you are looking for the Clinton against Westside girls game coming up in just a few minutes, you'll have to close out on this tab and open another. Hewitt misses on the shot from the charity stripe. Hornets with it under 10 seconds to go. Three-pointer from the corner. Up and good. Lane Falk with the trifecta. And that'll be the last shot of the game. 
for today. It's West Side 75, South Side B Branch 61. Any final thoughts, Richard? Oh, uh, yeah. The Eagles, I mean, they really turned it up in the second half. It was a very competitive first half. They were just able to pull away. I think they continued to work it inside because, as I mentioned many times throughout that game, they have the size, they have the skill, they have the personnel to score from inside. And, hey, I mean, if you if you can score from, in that, from inside that close, why not? And, hey, they finished through contact a lot of times. Drew some fouls, just made it more difficult for the, Bieber, or for the Hornets to try to find something offensively. And, and, you know, like I said, it's still early. Both these schools are, are – uh, B Branch is one of the 2A schools in the state that no football, they, they get to get right into basketball. So, And they both just play in really, really tough conferences. And, it's, and that, having that and being able to play this early is going to benefit both teams. And they're both well coached too. In our final score, West Side 75, South Side B Branch 61. Goes the final scores here for you. Unofficially, we have had a whopper of an offensive show from both Jacob Carlton and Zach Birmingham. Carlton led West Side with 29 points, Zach Birmingham with 26, Max Gibson with 13, including four from behind the arc, and then Rustin Holt with seven. For Southside B Branch, Connor Riddle had a game leading the way with 21 points. Tyler Sullivan with 15. Seven points from Whit Holland. Five from Cole Pennington. Four each from Cody Kirkendall and Nathan Emmert. Three from Lane Falk. And two from Jackson Thorne. Again, our final score is 75 to 69. Again, I'll say one more time if you're looking for the West Side Clinton girls game. You have to close out on this tab. In just a few seconds, we will have the new one started. So yep. don't be. think we've left you. Right, yeah, it should be on the same page. Just refresh the page, and we should be right there, live and in living color for this next game. See you there. So back in about a minute, at least with commercials <laughs> anyway. Right. It's uh, John Verser, Richard Sharp, and David Langford Jr. saying so long for just a few seconds. And uh, thank